good morning. I have come upstairs into my sewing space, yarny space today. I am going to do some work on the camper van, no, car camper cushion covers. <laughs> There's a bit of alliteration. So the other day, obviously I did some work on the cushions for the car camper. And I have one here. And what I did was I cut, this one doesn't look like it's been cut. This must have been one of the original ones that I managed to keep as was because it's been used in a different position, but I have thickened it. So if I get another one without them going all over the room, this one, this one has been cut down. You can see it's all light. These are quite old cushions. They were originally in John's old caravan, but this one needs a little bit of a trim before I adjust the cushion cover. But because I cut them shorter, they were about so long, longer, I've cut the ends off here. So obviously I need to make the cushion covers shorter. Technically, I suppose I could get away without it, but because I need the fabric to adjust these cushions to make them thicker, I'm cutting them down. So I cut off the offcuts in half, like I showed you on a previous video, down the middle and added them on with spray adhesive. So they're now two inches thicker. So I need to adjust the liners and the cushion covers for these. Um, because the foam is quite old, I made liners out of a polyester fabric that came wrapped around the seat part of a uh, sofa bed. Well, kind of like um, like a, I don't know if you, what they called stateside, but like a click clack sofa. So it's kind of like seat and back, and then you kind of tip it up, and then it goes like that. And the cushion part was wrapped up in this sort of fabric, which is a you know like that weird waffle polyester stuff. Sometimes get um, like pillow protectors and stuff, the cheap pillow protectors made out of this stuff. It's just like thin poly, I don't know, fabric with little hole things in. So I used this to make the liners. This is one of the liners. And the cushion covers I made out of plain white cotton, which I then stamped a design onto the top side of so and I just made kind of pillowcase fold over ends for them they weren't very good because I was doing them very very quickly uh well they didn't make up very quickly but they were done they were made uh they weren't the quality of how I made them wasn't great so I didn't finish any of the seams on the inside so they're a little bit Afraid, which doesn't matter because they're just a cushion cover and it was the same when I came to do the pillowcase opening I couldn't I always struggle to wrap my head around them so some of them work and some of them are very tight but what I'm going to be doing is cutting off the ends that I made to make them shorter to fit the cushions as they are now and I'm going to repurpose the fabric that I have especially the white the plain white to add in like side I don't you're not really a gusset but the sides of the cushions all I did was make box corners I think mm, did I make box very very rudimentary box corners so all I'm going to do is rip out the seams where the backing fabric and the front fabric meet. I think, I don't even think the top fabric is as wide as the back fabric. I just kind of made them with whatever I had. So the white fabric actually goes up the sides of the cushions and the printed fabric kind of goes over the top. These were made, like I just ran these up anyhow, just, just anyhow. So I'm going to rip out these seams and add in sections of white fabric although I suspect I'm going to end up using some of the printed fabric where necessary maybe I could use it on the ends but you're not going to notice so much and I need to work out how much I need 
So because I'm using the original seam allowance, I don't need to count that for the covers that I already have because I'm seam ripping them, not cutting them off. So because I've added on two inches and a one half, so I'll need three inch of fabric strips and I'll just put a strip all the way around the cushion. I just cut one long enough to go all the way around three sides because I, when I cut the ends off I will make sure they're long enough to kind of fold over at the ends I don't know if I'm going to do pillowcase openings again I might just make them long enough to fold over I'm not sure there was one cushion cover I noticed when I removed them where the end was different to the others um, I have my pile here so let me see if I can find it. One of them was very, very tight. And then one of them, I don't know what I did different, but it was definitely different. I don't know if it was just very long. It was this one. So you can see here the printed fabric, it kind of stops. I must have put them on the cushions before I stamped these. And I haven't done an envelope opening. It's just long. And all I'd done was tuck in the extra fabric underneath the cushion obviously there's enough excess that it will tuck underneath the cushion um so i might just do that because that is so much simpler but it depends how much fabric i've got i do have um some extra white fabric i'm not sure if this is cotton or irish linen um but i have some fine very fine weave white fabric that I can use where I don't have enough but I would like to just reuse as much of this as possible but I also have one extra cushion compared to last time because of the way I have the new setup in the car the it goes longer it goes into the front so I had to cut an entire new cushion and it's quite large as well it's a good one foot by Mm, nearly two foot so maybe I will end up using my offcuts of printed fabric to kind of make a patched up version for the top so I'll probably end up needing all of this if not more <laughs> I know we're close to Halloween, but if you're any good at sewing, you may want to hide behind your own cushion right now. I've made it. It's a little bit loose, but better loose than too tight. 
but I am kind of wondering whether I should have done an envelope opening after all. I have plenty of excess to be able to do so and I might yet do that. I'm not sure because I can't, it's, the cushion cover itself is a little too loose to kind of tuck in the ends and tuck them under. So I might have to take out these corners. Uh, but the side panels are just a bit, you know, they do the job. Once all the cushions are in the cart, you're not even going to see those side bits. So um, I might change this yet. But so far, that's one done. But I have another one, two, three, four, five. Is it five or six more to go? Five more to go. So I better crack on. I got bored <laughs> doing the cushion covers. Like I said, I don't really enjoy sewing. I kind of sew because I can use a sewing machine, just about. Uh, I do have a few sewing projects I really need to finish garments wise. Um, if you watched last year's Vlogtober, I started a autumnal brushed cotton dress, like a checky dress. Uh, yeah, that's still half done. <laughs> I really need to get that done. Maybe, maybe this week? We'll see. It's um, kind of the front panels are done and the back panels done but there's still quite a lot to do yet. I think I paused doing it because I had to make some decisions on sleeve size. But I'm currently doing a bit of knitting juggling. I have, let me move my camera, I have a pile of project bags here because I am short of long cables. So I'm knitting this garment off its longer cable onto a much shorter cable because I'm not well, I am working on it, but not actively at the moment because I am working more on the boogie sweater. But it is on quite a short cable and I need it on a longer one so I know how long to knit before I separate for sleeves. But all my other long cables are on garments and this is a problem when I have several garments on the go at any one time. And at the moment I have five. I have my waffle cardigan, I have my stripes sweater, I have my autumn leaves sweater, my Salem sweater, and there is also the witching hour sweater, and they're all on different cables. So I had to dig them all out to find out which ones were on which. So this is on kind of a mid-size cable, and the stripes is on my super duper long one, which could really do with being on the big waffle cardigan. And I think I have a normal long one on there, and a mid long one on that and then my bigger long one on this one so I'm knitting this onto a short cable and then I can knit this one onto the longer cable so that I can figure out how deep to do this raglan not raglan um this yoke I'm not sure if really it should be on the bigger black cable but I can't like the super duper long one that's on here but I just I, I don't want to have to knit that one off so I finished the ghost section but I am not happy with the ladder back. I did ladder back jacquard um, to catch some of these really long floats. I'm not sure if that's going to show on camera very well but there's these kind of ladders here. They use to catch long floats um, so they don't show through on the front side of your work. I have done them before but with this yarn being a high twist superwash um, yarn, the where the bottoms of each ladder is, I'm really blowing out, I do apologise. Um, it's making like a little hole where the ladder starts. So I'm gonna have to go around uh, with a darning needle or a knitting needle and just snug up stitches all alongside in each direction, a few stitches. That's going to be a pain in the bajaxi to do. I might be able to get away with some of them on the ghost because of where the eyes and such go because you do a duplicate stitch. So I'll have to check where those are but it's a bit of a pain in the bum. So tip if you're using high twist yarn or non-sticky yarn 
beware when doing lad about jacquard because you might not be 100% happy with the result. If it was like a Shetland yarn or you know like Jameson Shetland yarn or something like that it would probably be okay because it would kind of grip, it would be stickier. But high twist yarn, great for lace because it shows all the detailing but when you don't want the detailing showing, not so good. So I'm going to finish this off. Oh, I just had a really nice scone for my lunch. One of John's work colleagues sent him home with uh, some scones yesterday uh, to try. That he did a batch of scones. And there was a couple of um, treacle scones. Uh, they have black treacle in them. Or, well, I'd say black strap molasses, but molasses and black treacle are slightly different. Imagine molasses, but thickened up and darker, like it's cooked longer. Yeah. Um, and normally I'm not the biggest fan of black treacle. So I thought I'll just I'll just take a little corner off to try for my little, I ate the whole scone because it was really nice. So yeah, treacle scones are nice, even if you're not a fan of treacle.